Hello and welcome to everybody. Welcome to our Ask a Light Learn Design Special Interest Group monthly webinar. Today we have a small group but an intimate group as well. Looking forward to some fabulous discussions with everybody. Um, on behalf of Kashmira, myself, Keith and Kate, as your conveners for our Learning Design Special Interest Group, we would like to introduce this month's uh, webinar. But before we do, we want to highlight that uh, this year's Ascalite conference is held at the University of Melbourne this year with the theme on navigating the terrain, emerging frontiers in learning spaces, pedagogies and technologies. So please feel free to stay up to date with that. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and also uploaded to our Ascalite YouTube channel and other various forms of uh, dissemination as well. Now, just moving forward, before we get started, we do want to recognise and acknowledge um, our country as well. So on behalf of our Learning Design Specialist and Special Interest Group, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we are meeting today. And please feel free to acknowledge um, in the chat area, I do pay respects to our elders past and present and emerging and respect and extend this respect to all um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people as well. So for me, I reside in the beautiful lands of the Bunhong country down here as well. All right. Now, with our special interest group, we have an online presence, which we have a page called the Australian Association of Learning Designers, and it's um, in combination with our Ascalite Learning Design Group. It's an open page. It's on our LinkedIn. We have I think currently, is it around 900, um, around roughly 900 members? And the purpose of this online public space is really to build valuable connections across each other as well to collaborate, share events, activities, job opportunities, and insights and experiences into the area of um, learning design as well. So please do feel free to join. There's a QR code that's there. Please feel free to um, scan that and um, join our group in this beautiful, rich community that we have here. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you, we have a special guest speaker, James Neal, an assistant professor at the University of Canberra. Now, James, um, James is from the discipline of psychology, so very passionate about educational technologies, open education, experiential learning. Um, James bring us, you know, wealth of experiences in the open educational space, and particularly very passionate about Wikiversity and has um, over 15 years of teaching experiences across that space. So today we're looking at um, the topic of using open wikis for teaching and learning and wikis. Well, wow, I think um, my, my first stint of wikis was over two decades ago. Um, and I'm really keen to see where it's at at the moment with this. So really interesting um, topic, really keen to see what's happening in this space. And it looks to be quite an exciting uh, presentation ahead as well. So we have colleagues, Kashmira, Keith, and um, Kate and I will be in the background um, moderate, moderating the chat. Um, for now, it's over to you, James. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to you from Ngunnawal land, and you can see our little Indigenous um, swirl in our Uni of Canberra background there. Um, so, yeah, we're lucky to have one of those bush, bush campuses, uh, which is fantastic. So, I've um, been around kind of since the beginning of the internet and followed the kind of wiki movement, I guess, and uh, just honestly found that it has so many affordances and values in the educational setting, even though I think it's highly, they're highly underutilized and their capacities have only improved. And uh, I'm really honestly here to evangelize about uh, the potential for wikis, um, the, you know, www, the wonderful world of wikis. So I hope to give you some insight into those. And as we go, I'm probably going to spam your chat a little bit with uh, with a bunch of links that you can explore while I'm talking or, uh, or follow up afterwards. So there's a link there to the slides and um, the page about this presentation on on Wikiversity. 
So I guess I'm here to try and explain to you why I think wikis are good for education, uh, highlight the wiki sort of functions and affordances that I think um, are appealing. Uh, I will also talk about some of the challenges and limitations. And along the way, I'll kind of showcase the capabilities of the Wikimedia platform and in particular Wikiversity and Wikibooks as two of the projects that I think are, are most relevant to lecturers, teachers in higher ed and learning designers and ed, ed tech support people who are um, perhaps directing people to various uh, tools and options. Uh, I'll ask you these questions that you might want to think about as as we go, and feel free to pop it in the pop some answers into the chat. Uh, but I guess if I was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, uh, these are some things that I might be curious to know. First of all, what experiences have you had? Leanne said, you know, she knows that wikis go back, you know, twenty plus years. Um, have you edited any wikis? So a lot of people have sort of a recognition, almost everybody's heard of Wikipedia and almost everybody has visited a Wikipedia page and read something. But uh, for a lot of people, that's it. They, they're just consumers and they haven't necessarily learnt or acquired the skills to understand that they actually have some agency and control and can improve things, change things, discuss things, uh, start new articles, etc. Uh, and I think that's one of the one of the things that, in terms of professional development for staff and for students, and I'll actually say more about this later. But it's I find it easier to teach students about this stuff than staff um, to enable them to become a digital citizen and actually interact with these things and improve them. Even you know, I still find librarians still saying you know awful things to students about wikipedia like don't ever use it don't touch it you know you're not allowed to and uh, others are starting to realize that it is part of the information landscape and developing digital literacy and critical thinking skills does involve um, being able to read those texts and work out you know what what is good and, and what isn't there's a lot of quality ratings now that are available on articles and there's a a lot of peer review and um, sort of quality control going on. So I think we need to move beyond the sort of blanket, you know, wikis are bad. And I think that has been one of the reasons that wikis are probably still underutilised in, in higher ed. Uh, you can edit anonymously, but we would encourage people to set up an account. It's just one account that operates across all the wiki platforms that I'm going to share about um, with you. Uh, and that means that you can gather all your edits in one place and it has all sorts of um, advantages. You can get statistics on on what, what people are doing. There's a huge amount of sort of benefit. You can customise your experience, et cetera. So it's free to set up a lifetime account that works across all platforms or all Wikimedia Foundation platforms. Uh, they're not the only ones. Uh, so there's other educational wikis that, perhaps we'll see pop up in the chat that you might have bumped into. But I guess I am distinguishing between just the little wiki that might come within your learning management system. They often have some collaborative pages that a class can work on together. And that is a baby step. And, you know, for some people, that is a good place to start just to get comfortable with collaborative editing. And I think that is a scary concept for some people where you used to traditionally writing very individually and perhaps only showing our document to our lecturer and getting a mark and then it just disappears into the electronic waste bin um, but the future of work is very collaborative and collaborative editing is a skill in and of itself um, and I'll show you an example where I've worked with students in open wikis for a learning and assessment task and uh, how they can successfully navigate that open editing space. Uh, what's your uni's approach to using wikis? Do they use them? Do they not use them? Um, how how do they navigate the issues that, that might come up? And what are you 
advising teaching staff about wikis like is a wiki even in your toolkit of options that you're offering to uh, to teaching staff um and yeah how well informed are you about what what you're advising them and i guess finally what comments or questions some people have had good experiences some people might not um so i'd be curious to hear about those I guess there's some implicit values behind what I'm presenting here. Uh, the first one being that I think knowledge sharing is fundamentally good. Uh, and the more knowledge that is shared, the better. And uh, I would I tend to operate with an open by default personal philosophy. And we've seen you know governments, fund research funding bodies, et cetera, all moving in that kind of direction. I think education is just moving a little more slowly, but gradually universities are updating things like their copyright policies to place greater value on use of open educational resources and sharing of those things and allowing Creative Commons licenses to curriculum and, and things like that. But that is a sticky space. And one of the frequently asked questions that I would anticipate we'll get here today is, how do you manage university copyright policies when you're putting materials openly on online for it, for everybody to access? Uh, so I guess along with that, I think open education is good. Uh, and I think the more we can move in that way, uh, when we bring transparency to any kind of work that's done, the quality improves. Uh, and so that's one reason, as well as all the collaborative benefits that come from peer review, people improving things, uh, et cetera. So I think he, it's a more rapid path to quality development when things are, are open to, to many eyes. And thirdly here, that wikis offer a functionality and utility that, that is underutilized. So I'm, I'm glad Leanne talked about the start of when she first saw a wiki. So a, a tiny bit of history here. Um, internet became public 1993. It wasn't long afterwards that the first wiki appeared uh, by a, a fellow named Ward Cunningham, and it was called Wiki Wiki Web. Now the word wiki wiki, uh, as it was originally, is a Hawaiian word for quick or speedy. So the literal translation was like fast web or, or speedy web, because the idea of a wiki is that it's the simplest web page that somebody can change and edit. Uh, if you just write an HTML page, it's, it's fixed. Only the person with the login can change it. So what they were looking for here is how can we have an internet that is ed editable? Uh, Wikipedia, which is what the wiki you probably think of, 2001. So it's now, you know, almost 25 years old. And then soon after, what happened was uh, Wikipedia is for encyclopedic information and people wanted to put up other things and they were getting deleted. And so people were saying, well, hang on, this still fits with your mission um, of sharing all knowledge openly. What can we do? And so we've we've now got something like 14 different projects called sister projects set up around Wikipedia for other purposes, running on the same platform, same software. So people wanted to start writing books, which you can't do on Wikipedia because you can only put up um, existing information. You can't write new novel things on, on Wikipedia. So Wikibooks... Uh, became its own project in 2003, and that was for people to write an ebook. It's a free platform to create ebooks. And then people wanted to start uploading lecture slides, you know, lesson plans, curriculum, which are not books. And people wanted to start doing research and sharing research um, information. So there was a Wikiversity started on Wikibooks and then it split off as a separate project in 2006 um, and so Wikiversity is for learning and teaching materials and activities as well as research 
so that's quite a while ago. All of that happened quite a while ago, 2006. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit more about that ecosystem. But as I said, a wiki is the simplest web page for editing. We covered that. The mission of the Wikimedia Foundation then, which is a non-profit US-based organisation, is to empower and engage people around the world to collect and develop educational content under a free licence or in the public domain and to disseminate it effectively and globally. So there's a kind of an irony here that the core of the mission is educational content and yet the best known project, I mean, Wikipedia is educational, but it's not um, it's not educational in the way we might think about curriculum and um, learning activities and things like that. It's just a pile of information. Okay, so these sister projects um, make up a diverse ecosystem of free, open, also multilingual, and I'll talk a bit more about that. So for every one of these projects, we're all probably thinking of the English version of them, but there's a French version, there's a, you know, um, Swahili version, etc. if there's a community of users uh, who are sufficiently active to warrant to set up a separate language project. Um, so Wikipedia, you know about Wiki Commons. That's where all the media is hosted. So that's where you'd upload an image, a video, an audio file, a PDF document, etc. So when you go to a Wikipedia page and you see an image, it's being drawn from the central repository. Uh, so, and and those image those documents can be deployed then in any of these different projects. Uh, Media Wiki is the software that everything runs on, and you can download it and install it on your own server and run your own wiki if you wanted, which many people do. Uh, you could use it as a content management system if if you wanted to. Uh, Meta Wiki for overall coordination of the projects. Wiki Books we've talked about. Wiki Data is a relatively new project that is. Uh, like a structured database. So it collects data that connects elements from all the different projects and it can be queried and, uh, you know, it's got an API. So you can actually effectively run data analysis on the structured data. Uh, and as you probably appreciate now, things like AI training, uh, I've used a lot of Wikipedia content and this helps to sort of feed the data into various systems. Wiki News, if you want to write a news article. Um, Wiki Quotes collects quotes. Wiki Source is for pre existing books. So, books that go out of copyright can be uploaded, holus bolus, as text, edited, fixed up, etc. So, obviously, there's all the past stuff, long past stuff, but everything that comes out of copyright each year can then potentially be uploaded there. Uh, and we could go on. That's that's. I think there's fourteen or or projects all up. So each any of those projects are potential places for collab for use in an educational context. You know, if you're doing library studies or something, then you know you might be interested in Wikisource. Uh, if you're doing biology, then you might be interested in Wiki Species. If you're doing tourism, you might be interested in Wiki Voyage. Uh, so I'd encourage journalism wiki news encourage you to think about the whole repertoire because too many people are overly wikipedia centric and they're kind of blind to the other opportunities that are here all of the projects are openly editable editable so lecturers students researchers can add data use data um, alter have discussions about those things Uh, so just a tiny bit about Wikibooks, because I'm mostly going to focus on Wikiversity. Uh, as I said, it's for new ebooks. So that means that this, there's this growing trend now towards, um, at least locally, and I think it's happening in all unis, towards maybe weaning off commercial textbooks and moving towards open educational resource textbooks. 
from what I've seen, the vast majority of those textbooks are being put out on Pressbooks, which is a private company. So although they're facilitating uh, the development of open textbooks, um, it's not a completely free and open platform. You, know, you have to join, call or, or pay to, to access. Um, the other concern of, about uh, Pressbooks I've noticed is that almost everybody's publishing under a Creative Commons non-commercial licence, which is not actually, according to the United Nations, um, an open educational resource. It would need to be published under a freer license than than non-commercial. So unfortunately, there's a lot of well-meaning academics and librarians working together producing open textbooks that actually are not technically um, in the true spirit of, of what an open educational resource is. Uh, so I think there's a bit of a missed opportunity here that um, many of these books could arguably be better delivered and developed on Wikibooks. Um, the other thing is that those those press books are not editable by anyone else. So if I see a typo in the book or a new citation that could be added or a sentence that could be added, I can't do it. I mean, I can fork the book, copy the whole thing, start my own project, but that's a very cumbersome way of going about it. Whereas a, a Wikibook can be edited by anyone to to improve it. Um, okay. So Wikiversity, um, multi-language. So uh, all up, there's about 150,000 pages. About uh, 30,000 are on the English version. Actually, the language with the most is uh, German. There's 17 languages, and even if your language doesn't have a project, there's something called beta Wikiversity for all other languages until they develop a community of users. Around 760 active users across those projects. On Wikiversity, it's about 200. And there's a... Uh, Admins, so people who can do things like delete or block or protect or, you know, there's a whole sort of hierarchy of permissions and functions, uh, about 55, and the English Wikiversity has about 11. So this is all kind of volunteer run. The funding for the service, et cetera, is coming through Wikimedia Foundation fundraising. So you get your little, you know, please donate banners up there every now and again. And that decision was made because uh, some time ago and they've stuck with it because uh, the alternative was to put ads up on the pages, which would have generated revenue. Uh, so it's actually, although those numbers might look big, to be honest, it's pretty light in terms of the number of people to do the, the volunteer management um, of the wikis. Uh, but there is a system that if a local... Wiki lacks uh, sufficient staff that there's cent central staff who can um, who can get access who, who have access to deal with any major issues. Uh, so as I've hinted, the mission or the purpose for Wikiversity is for learning resources, oops, um, learning projects and research for all levels. So there's there's some, not a lot, but there's some like early childhood materials up there. Um, all types, we could be talking formal and informal education, doesn't just have to be formal. So, and different styles of education. So it's very inclusive in terms of what is permitted. Um, So you can have your own tour uh, of, say, English Wikiversity. I'll, I'll put the, the link in here. And down the left-hand side, you would see things like guided tours, portals by sort of subject area, examples of featured
projects kind of rotating on the front page. Uh, if you go to browse, there's all sorts of categorizations and, you know, hierarchical organizations of, of content. Of course, you've got a search bar, which is probably what most people would maybe start with, see if your passion area, what, what there is around that topic. And, you know, one of my favorite buttons on, you know, any wiki is, is the random button. So, um, you know, what's presented on the front page is a little bit like the tip of the iceberg. It kind of hides perhaps what is actually on the wiki. And if you hit that random button a few times, you start to get a sample of, oh, okay, this is the kind of stuff I would find on, on this wiki. Uh, sometimes it's underwhelming because a lot of pages are pretty under, underdeveloped and um, not not sort of, and there's a lot of debate always about should this be in the main space or should it be moved over into somebody's draft area because it's, um, it's you know, under, underdone or, or insufficient. So on Wikiversity or any of the other projects, a teacher could create, edit, fork um, educational resources, course materials, um, and learning activities of any kind of topic or scope. Uh, you can bring your students in and have them set up accounts and that they're allowed to edit. Uh, researchers can develop research projects. There's a, just as you saw that Wikibooks evolved from Wikipedia, um, and Wikiversity evolved from Wikibooks. There is a project on Wikiversity called Wiki Journals, where people are uh, publishing their articles or, or putting up their submissions, getting open peer review, and then um, having that article published on Wikiversity. But I think the hope is that they will become their own project. So Wiki Journals would be a separate project and be a publishing platform for open research. Uh, so students, of course, can access and view the content, but they can also create and edit content. Uh, like a blog, which typically has a discussion at the bottom, every wiki page has a discussion tab. And so there's the main article, and then if you go to the talk page or the discussion page, you'll see all the back and forth um, about that. And if you're on Wikipedia, if you've never been on a talk page, I encourage you to click on that and just see what, what the discussion is, especially for controversial topics. Um, that's where kind of the spicy stuff happens is on the, uh, on the talk page. So I, I have students, I give students feedback on their work on their talk page. I have encouraged students to give each other feedback about their developing work. Uh, there's a project on Wikiversity called Wiki Debates where you can put up spicy topics and um, people can get up there and have a kind of practice dialogue, um, you know, a bit of an alternative to the sort of free-for-all on social media. It's meant to be a, a training platform for having a, a um, civil intellectual debate. And there's a bunch of modules that have been added in. You can do interactive quizzes and, and things like that and embed them. Uh, on pages. So one of the most fun things for me is not just putting my stuff up there, but actually empowering students to become digital citizens. And uh, I find that, as I said earlier, it's actually pretty easy to teach students. In a one-hour class, I can teach them all the basics that they need and they practice them as they go. They create a user account. Um, I explain to them that they can create an anonymous account or a, uh, or one with their name attached. So often an, a concern is privacy. Uh, so I only need to know who they are when they submit in the LMS uh, and so that I can link that, but they can be completely anonymous. Actually, what happens is some people go anonymous, then they get proud of what they've done and they can change their username so that they, they can identify it. They can add, add their work to an e-portfolio or to a CV. If I get asked to write a referee report, I always go to their project they did with me and I paste the link to their project in the referee report and say, look, here's 
is an example of what this person is capable of doing. Uh, so we then show them how to edit their user page so they can have a bit of a bio or, or profile on their user page. And on there, we can teach them the basic markup. Now, traditionally, Wiki was a bit scary for people because when you hit edit, you saw code. And that sort of edit source code, which is like a, I would say, a slightly dumbed down version of HTML. Um, and Wikipedia, through its sort of user feedback surveys, realized that that was an issue when their engagement started to drop off. And so they've worked really hard in the last five years to develop WiseyWeek editing. Um, so now when you go to edit, there's a sort of edit in WiseyWeek mode which is what you see is what you get, like working on a document. And then there's the edit source, which gives you access to more power if you want to do some, you know, funkier sort of stuff. Uh, so they learn how to do their basic formatting. And, you know, the, one of the things that makes a wiki a wiki is that you can link things to things. So we teach them how to do internal links to other pages, um, how to do links to the sister projects, how to link to a Wikipedia article or a Wiktionary, you know, definition of a, of a word and how to link to external sources. Uh, how they can create headings, because once you get any sort of length, you know, beyond a page, it, it helps to break things up into headings and subheadings and build a table of contents, which is interactive, so you can click through the article. And then how to find and embed images into their work. Um, they can use Wiki Commons. We teach them how to upload things into Wiki Commons. So they've got their own photograph or they find another free image or, you know, as of last year, I, I want to generate an AI image and upload that to Wiki Commons. And then they can use it on their page, but so can other people. So they're, they're making that contribution. Uh, so I don't want to go too much into the technical stuff, but I've talked about users, they can edit, then there are permissions. So if staff get keen and um, want a bit more control over the environment, they can become a curator, which gives them the ability to delete and protect pages. Uh, they can go on to be a custodian, which gives access to more tools, including blocking users. There's a few bureaucrats which can who can give other people these permissions. Um, or, you know, in very extreme scenarios where you get a serial kind of troll or spammer, then there are there's a function to block IP address ranges. And then there's some more central people who can do all of those things and do things like block people across multiple projects, blacklist certain links, uh, et cetera. And then there's developers writing the software and writing new modules and functions um, to improve the environment. So I guess for me, why, why I like using wikis, anyone can edit. I uh, just think that basic de democracy um, in, collab in uh, education is just really fundamental um, if it can be possibly achieved. There's a whole stack of policies, procedures, guidelines, etc., and ultimately decisions are controlled but or guided by community consensus. There's no higher power. It's it's up to the community to work it out. Uh, yes, there's you know conflicts and that sort of thing, but the point is it all gets worked out. Um, so I, I find that encouraging for myself, but also that's the kind of practice trying to encourage students to have voices, um, engage in discussion, share their opinions and come to a collaborative decision. Uh, I love the fact that wikis uh, provide version control and transparent editing history. So every edit that's made, you put a summary in of that edit, they can all be reviewed through the, if you go to the history of, of a wiki page, you can compare one version with another version. Uh, you can see what, you know, that user has done to, to that page. And so I can see students working on their work in real time, which can be a bit confronting for some of them. And 
I can jump in and help them out as as they're editing if I can see that um, there, there could be some benefit. And if anything goes wrong, you can roll back to an earlier version. Uh, so it's collaborative and honestly, highly stable, highly, highly stable. Uh, I know LMSs, you know, have you want a 99 point whatever percent um, uptime, but yeah, there's been times when I've wikis on and the LMS is down, you know, because it's been upgraded or something. So it, it's it's a well-proven platform. So he, here's how I kind of think about the design from teaching a unit um, that I've got my LMS and I've got Wikiversity. I only I try and keep only on the LMS the things that absolutely have to be there. So enrollments, you know, student contact details. Uh, I need a record of their submission, but in most cases, the submission, if it's a wiki assignment, is a URL, a link to a web page. Uh, obviously, their marks and course time specific announcements, discussion, etc. Beyond that, um, I separate out the content. So anything that's a generic open uh, a generic resource, so lecture slides, uh, which I do put on Google Docs, but would link from, from Wikiversity, um, curriculum, lesson plans. So every lecture has its own page. Every tutorial has its own page with aims, learning objectives, um, links, activities, et cetera. So class materials, uh, descriptions of the assessment in a, in, without usually without dates, but with the, you know, the, the basic requirements and student editing, if they're doing um, something up there and if possible, the interactive feedback. So marks are on the LMS, but feedback so that other people can learn from it. Um, I try and put on Wikiversity. Now I have had comments that no, this is a bit tricky to na navigate. We want all our content in the LMS, um, which is fair enough. So, but with things like iframe embedding, you can kind of have the best of both worlds. So that, that's just a screenshot of a Canvas page for tutorial three, and it's just an iframe that's embedding a Wikiversity page. The links all work, and they can um, access the content without without going outside of the the LMS. Um, so that's, I think that's um, relatively easy to deal with. Uh, challenges. In general, I think awareness of wikis as a viable option for developing educational content is pretty low. Uh, this is something I struggle with because I, I'm highly motivated to teach as openly as possible, but uh, I don't find that everybody is. <laughs> um, and I've puzzled over that over the years, whether, you know, that's just an individual difference and in preference or whether there's professional development or um, institutional nudges and sort of norms that might shift. Because I think a lot of people would will just shift naturally as the, as the institutional attitude changes. Um, but often people are maybe just happy to, keep their stuff in their little bubble. Uh, editing skills can be scary. And yeah, I guess anything you don't know can can be a little scary. So, But uh, it doesn't take long, as I've shown with students, for them to become uh, surprisingly skilled. And the interface is only easier than ever. Institutional copyright policies, I think, uh, often uh, a bit old in terms of their approaches, but I've noticed as they're getting reviewed, they're getting a bit more permissible and even encouraging around teachers uh, engaging in open educational resource use and, and production. And then I think it's probably you guys, like having learning design ed tech support staff with wikis as one of the, one of the things in their toolkit. Uh, so at least it's an option that they can lay out lay out on their table when a uh, when a teacher comes with a particular educational question or, or problem. Uh, and then I think it's just about supporting those people because it you know I've I have been fortunate to have a colleague or two uh, over the years in my same institution who's 
doing something similar, and that has helped. There is a local chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation called the, uh, well, I guess it's Wikimedia Foundation Australia, um, with a couple of paid staff, and they're there for sort of outreach and support. They mostly seem to concentrate on Wikipedia and getting, you know, Australian women biographies, for example, up on Wikipedia and, and strategic kind of gaps that they know that they want to try and um, address. But they are interested in education and they would be happy to engage with institutions. The UK does a nice job of, in some unis, of having uh, Wikimedians, Wikimedians in residence. And this would be where a uni would say, yeah, we'd love to have a local uh, Wikimedian for a year to upskill and train our staff uh, to work on the information about our university on Wikipedia <laughs> in a very short-sighted sense. Um, and generally just, um, yeah, upskill and engage in our community. And that's an interesting model, I think, to, to potentially consider. Okay, uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you an example. Um, so I teach a unit called Motivation and Emotion. It's a third year undergraduate psychology unit. Uh, as I said, the, uh, there is a page in this site for each um, lecture, each tutorial, and each kind of assessment. I've just hit you with a bunch of links that I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, but the notable thing about this is that each student writes a unique page, we call it a chapter, about a unique motivation and emotion topic as their kind of major right their major piece so it'd be the equivalent of writing an essay it's a you know 3000 word essay online uh so i just wanted to so one of those links would take you to the landing page um for this unit and i've designed this to look almost identical to what they see in Canvas, the, the learning management system. So it's the same icons, same text, et cetera. Um, and that's after sort of a response to feedback over time saying, I'm a bit confused when I'm navigating between the LMS and, and Wikiversity. And this is the project that they work on. Uh, and it's got, a, this, this is like an index page because these are the, the years in which we've been writing these books, so since 2010. And if we click on last year's book, uh, this unit had 150 students. So here we have a topic with a link and a page. Each topic has a question, and then each user has signed up to a topic. I usually put the topics up, and they're different each year. I thought I would run out of topics, but we're up to 1,400 chapters. And as fast as they write, don't worry, there's people publishing new knowledge in this space and there's things that we haven't heard of. Uh, and we just keep coming up, up with more topics. So there's a bunch of motivation topics, a bunch of emotion topics. So if we drill into, say, one topic, uh, this student's written about something called actively open-minded thinking. And I kind of, we've developed this format over time where they have like a scenario or a case study to attract reader attention with, with an image in a kind of highlight box, some focus questions to guide their chapter, and then a series of headings and subheadings with links to relevant things, images to illustrate the ideas. So it looks at, you know, probably a lot like a Wikipedia page, uh, but they can embed things like this, a quiz, interactive quiz, uh, as people go along, a conclusion, some links, all their references, and this page belongs to a bunch of categories. Uh, there's their discussion page. So on over here we'd find my uh, student feedback, 
as well as my feedback about the different stages of development. So what I have learned over the years is not just to ask them to do the final thing, but they submit a plan. I can comment on the plan and then that then they're more confident in producing a, uh, a final work. Uh, they also do a three minute multimedia presentation to accompany the, the chapter. And that is linked from the very top of the chapter. Uh, so they can upload that to comments, but a lot of them put it on YouTube. Okay, so in conclusion, um, yeah, we've just got this awesome resource, a free, no cost, flexible, highly functional platform, stable platform for developing open educational curricula. Uh, so I'd encourage people just to, yeah, start very small, you know, pick a passion topic, see what's there. If you, if you think you can do better or improve what's there, then have a go and um, then you might be more confident in introducing it to, to others. All right, uh, that's it from me. I've seen things happening on the chat, but I haven't had a chance to digest. Thank you very much, James. Um, I, I, I'm jumping in to, to lead the Q&A session, and we've got a little bit of time for some questions, and, and that was a, a wonderful presentation, and, and I especially appreciated the introduction to the, the diversity of different kind of um, the applications, all the different wiki tools, because um, I'm certainly not familiar with all of them. Um, we We always start off with a question about you know, accessibility and inclusivity. Um, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a couple of ways of asking this question. Um, you spoke a little bit about the the value of Wiki for democratising knowledge, which I think is um, important, um, you know, and, and your com personal commitment, which is a commitment I share as well to, you know, to open education, to making things as transparent as possible. Um, but what about uh, from a, you know, from a web content access guidelines um approach you know how how accessible are wikis for people who, who use screen readers or things like that yeah look uh, i guess my answer is just going to be mostly from just personal experience with students um i think you know like i've, like I said, I've put 1400 students through that kind of process i think i've had two students for whom there was an issue. Uh, one of them was very upset after the semester that she wasn't able to remove her work, uh, even though it was anonymous and, and everything. And um, that the change I made from that was to be more explicit up front that when you hit submit on on save on that you're committing it to an open platform and it can't actually be revoked once you once you commit to it and that if that's not acceptable to the student that they should negotiate an alternative with with me mm -hmm. um and since I've become more explicit that hasn't been an issue the other student was almost fully blind mm -hmm. and he said to me look this is just going to be too hard for me to use I, I can barely open a Word document and, you know, have it on a thousand percent and work, let alone navigate all of that stuff up there. So in his case, we just negotiated that's that's what he would do. He would produce a Word document and, and submit it. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, that's not to say that it meets all the standards and, and I'm less familiar with what all the kind of specific standards are, but the whole point about being open is that, yeah, it's there are multiple ways of accessing that content. I mean, it's really just a bit of database content that can be, you know, rendered through different skins and that sort of thing, kind of however you want. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's a satisfactory no, no. answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you, you know, and, and also the, you know, the changes that you've made. I mean, the, the fact that you've been doing it for, for so long um, shows you know, it's it's great opportunity to to change your practice or adapt it. You know, revise it as you go along. Mm. Um, 
my my next question, I guess, is is more. You know, <laughs> we were talking about emotion and motivation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How motivating do you think it is that that this is live? It's authentic. It's genuine. Other people could go and read their articles if they are interested. Mm. Is that a, a contribution to the student engagement with the subject? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's very ar arousing, <laughs> and like. Oh shit! Yeah, like especially when we in that first tutorial when I say you know hit save on that first edit. You know, you if you've never done it before, you had you have just created a web page. It exists. It's got a URL. You can share it with people. Um, anybody can see it. And there, there is a. I think we should give students the thrill of publication. Um, you know, I remember when I don't know I wrote my first poem and pub published it in the student newspaper or something like it. it it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and here we have this awesome publishing tool. It's kind of weird to me that we're not giving students that opportunity to to have a go. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is arousing. Now, for some, it's when I say arousing, that means some people are over the arousal curve a bit and they're quite stressed. Um, a lot of them would what they will do is work privately in a Word document or, and then cut and paste when they've got something that they think is mature enough. But there's a guideline on Wiki, on all the Wiki projects, which is be bold. Um, have a go. If you make a mistake, you can't break anything on the Wiki. It just gets changed. So I do find I have to put quite a bit of effort in tr trying to counsel students towards saying, well, look, if you put it up there and it can be improved, somebody else might see it and improve it and you will progress more more rapidly than just holding on to it um, until the last minute. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, my colleague Kashmira has a question. So I, I was uh, just looking at those uh, some of the posts. So if I was a student and I posted something, uh, can I edit? So, I mean, like delete a paragraph and add some new paragraph or something to what I had existing. Mm. So that's, that's one of my questions. And Simon is asking, uh, what about the privacy uh, and the student data? Um, yeah, well, I think the answer to your question is yeah, pretty straightforward. When you edit, it's like editing a document. You, you take out what you don't want, add whatever you, you do want to add. Um, so privacy, look, largely it's just the fact that you can edit anonymously. So if you want to be private, then, you know, set up a username that has nothing to do with you and, you know, uh, do, do your work. Uh, so that doesn't seem to have privacy issues. I mean, we're not doing personal self-reflections up there and that sort of thing. You know, we're writing in the third person about some you know, external topic. Uh, so that's the only real issue that I've run into um, is that, yeah, some people want to be private, which is fine. That A lot of the wikis are written by anonymous people. Uh, this, uh, I don't know the stats, but my gut feeling is there's way more anonymous editors than there are known editors. Yeah. Thank you. Um, does that, sorry, does that answer your question, Simone? Hi. Um, yeah, it was more more around the fact that I know here nothing would get past our um, the scrutiny if if we weren't assured that student data was being kept um, and that student privacy. Like we wouldn't even be allowed to use something like that unless it went through rigorous testing right up the chain and went through the mm. lawyers, all of that sort of stuff. So I'm just wondering, yeah, what sort of data is held and how private is it? All of that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, well, I mean, if, as I said, if you set up anonymously, basically no data. I mean, in the background, your IP address, that username, you can register an email address, but you don't have to. Um, so it's about as minimal sort of data that you're contributing when you set up a user account. Um, students own their work. So one thing that all copyright policies are 100% clear about, to the best of my knowledge, is a student owns their work. So a student owns the copyright to whatever they're doing and a student can choose to put that material wherever they want. Um, so um, I think there could be an issue, but this is almost the opposite of what you're talking about. 
that the university is obligated to hold records about student submissions and that if the student submissions are on an external server, that perhaps we should be capturing, snapshotting that at some point in time because I just have them submit a URL, but maybe I should have them submit a URL plus a PDF of the web page so that the institution holds a fixed snapshot of the piece of work that has been submitted. But that's not really a privacy issue. That's more of a sort of compliance uh, records issue. So you didn't have to get permission to use this? Uh, I've never sought permission and I've never been queried. And I'm waiting. Like, honestly, I'm waiting. I, I, like, I expected a letter from the copyright officer or the ADE or something at some point. But, um, yeah, that doesn't. They haven't come to me yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, more of a comment than a question, but Matthew's put something in the chat about um, anonymity and some of the challenges about that. Um, mm. I'm just looking at the time, and I just want to hand back to Leanne to wrap the session for us. Come in, Leanne. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's been playing the mute and unmute button. But thank you so much to James for um, the opportunity for you to present um, on wikis. It's been one of those things um, that, you know, a couple of decades ago, but it's so great to see where it's at and the calibre and the broadness of wikis at the moment as well. And I think we've got some really interesting questions um, popped up. Um, I'll be around for the next five to 10 minutes as well. Um, and I don't know, James, if you're going to be available as well for this, but happy to continue some uh, great discussions. But otherwise, thank you to everybody for joining us today. We look forward to seeing everyone else for the next um, monthly webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Hey, everyone. Nice to see you, Simone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>